Hi there, Lumberjacks. My name is Andrea, and I'm one of the staff psychotherapists over at Counseling and Psychological Services. And I'm here today to share with you a skill related to relationships and communication. It's one of the skills that we talk about in the Relationship Skills Workshop that I facilitate a few times each semester. And I just wanted to share it with you today and see if it might be useful for you. And maybe you'll want to sign up for the workshop. It could be an online version of it or an in-person workshop once we're in person again. So let's just say um, there's, let's go with a scenario. Let's say you've got a partner and you live together. Um, and let's say that for a long time now, there's been an issue of dishes in the sink and your partner has a tendency to not wash their dishes and leave them in the sink. And that's really upsetting for you and you've talked about it a few times. And they've said they'll, they'll, they'll start washing their dishes. They've promised that. So let's say um, in this scenario, you've come home from a long day at work and at school and the dishes are in the sink. It's your partner's dirty dishes and they're in the living room playing a video game or something like that. <laughs> Understandably, you'd probably be pretty upset. So um, let's look at two different ways you might communicate with your partner and discuss the differences between them. In scenario one, let's call this the, um, the unprocessed response. <laughs> you might just go into the living room and stand between them and the TV and wait until they've got their attention on you and you might say, you're a slob, why do you always leave your dishes like this? I'm tired of cleaning up after you. If you don't wash those dishes right now, I'm moving out. Okay, so that's one thing you could do. You could say that. Um, curious, just hearing me say that, how might you receive that if you were the person on the other end of the communication? Um, chances are you'd probably feel pretty defensive because you statements and calling names definitely produces defensiveness in the other party. That's pretty standard response, human response to that kind of communication. Um, at the end there, there was an ultimatum, you know, really a serious ultimatum of something must happen right now or a big decision is going to be made and the other person won't really have much say in that. Um, so that's response number one. Now let's say instead of doing that, you go and interrupt your partner playing the video game maybe by standing there and saying, hey, I need your attention. And then when they give the attention saying, I need a few minutes to chat when you've got time sooner than later. So they'll get the message that it's important. And then once they are able to communicate, you might say, you know, I, I just came home and saw that there were dirty dishes in the sink. And immediately I felt angry. I felt sad. I, I'm disappointed because we've talked about this before. And you know, I, I've made it clear that I really value a clean kitchen, a clean house, and uh, this keeps happening. Um, I'm not sure if I can live like this, and I need to know if, if I'm going to be able to live with you, you know, having a clean house like we talked about. So let's say you're the recipient of that kind of statement. It still hits the same points of what happened, disappointment, the feelings, and kind of an ultimatum, but not really an ultimatum. There's, there's some spaciousness there saying, hey, I, I, I'd like you to be involved in this. So given that different way of describing what's going on, do you think you'd be as defensive as response number one? Chances are probably not. Usually saying I statements like I feel this or I feel that, actual feeling words. I felt sad, I felt angry, I felt disappointed. Those aren't good things to hear. They're not comfortable to hear, but they're, they're true. They're feelings and that's what you're reporting to your partner. And it's usually um, evocative of some kind of empathy when you communicate that way, when it's not a, a you statement or a blaming kind of thing. Um, you are identifying the dishes as being the source of that, but you're talking about the, the scene that you saw. It's not so much about your partner, but their actions. So in a way, it's kind of a de-escalating statement while still raising the important issue of what's important to you in this fake scenario of where your dishes are important to you, <laughs> which may or may not be the case in real life. So um, there are a few differences between those those two example statements that I shared with you today. Uh, the second one is derived from something we call nonviolent communication. It's a communication style that we discuss and practice quite a bit in the relationship skills workshop. 
The workshop's only four weeks long. It's about an hour, hour and a half each time, depending on the size of the group that we have. And um, besides nonviolent communication, there's several other things that we go through around relationships and they're, they're applicable to all kinds of relationships, not just romantic relationships. So if you found this discussion today useful to help you think about the ways that you communicate with people in your life, then I recommend joining the group and you might learn some other useful stuff and you definitely get a, a deeper dive into nonviolent communication, that's for sure. All right, thanks, Jax. See you around soon.